This is part 4 of the 5 part series on net ionic equation. In this video, we're going to write total and net ionic equation where there's only reactants given and nothing else. If you're new to writing ionic equations, I recommend you start with the first two videos in this series. So let's take a look at our question. We're given the reactants and that's about it. I consider this a pretty difficult question because we don't have the products and we also need to predict the solubility states and the physical states. Since that's the case, the first thing we need to know is to predict the products. Before we can do that, we need to first know what kind of reactions these reactants will undergo. Generally, there are three types of reactions that is involved in ionic equation. The first being the single replacement reaction, that's where A and B will swap places, that's why it's known as a single replacement. The second type is a double replacement reaction where A, B and C, D will swap places. We have two terms involved, that's why they are called a double replacement reaction. And then the third reaction is neutralization, where acid and base, HA and BOH, they react together, they get neutralized and then they form salt, which is BA and H2O. So let's take a look at our given question. And we have PbNO32 plus K2CrO4. That looks like an A, B plus C, D problem. So which means we're going to have a double replacement reaction for this question. So A is actually Pb2 plus and B is actually NO3 minus. C is K plus and D is CrO42 minus. If you need a refresher on how to split the ions, I'm going to link the video here. Now that we've identified our anions and cations, let's go ahead and swap their partners. That will give us AD, which is Pb2+, CrO4, 2-, and Cb, which is K+, NO3-. So we need to form ionic compound. And that will give us AD is Pb, CrO4, and our Cb is going to be KNO3. So when you write the formula for ionic compound, make sure you pay attention to the charges. Now that we figure out the products, it's time to move on to the second step, which is identify the physical states using the solubility rules. I'll link the video if you need a refresher on solubility rules. So it looks like we have aqueous for lead nitrate, aqueous for potassium chromate, solid for lead chromate, and aqueous for potassium nitrate. Moving on to step three, we need to make sure that the equation is balanced. So we need to place a two in front of KNO3 and that will give us the same number of atoms on both sides of the equation. So step four, we need to ionize the AQ terms. AQ is aqueous, right? So that means we need to break any aqueous terms into ions. It's important to note that we only do that for aqueous terms. We leave solid, liquid, and gas terms alone. So we're going to start with the first term, which is PbNO32. So since it's aqueous, it will break into Pb2+, and 2NO3-. The reason we have a 2 in front of NO3- minus is because of this 2 here. Now moving on to our second term which is K2CrO4. They will split to give us 2K plus and CrO4 minus. Since PbCrO4 is a solid, we're just going to leave it be. We don't ionize that. And then after that, our final term which is 2KNO3 is going to split to give us K plus NO3 minus. And because of that 2 in front of KNO3, we're going to make sure that we write them for K plus and NO3 minus as well. So make sure you don't leave out that 2. Very important. At this point, what we have done is we have written out the total ionic equation. Now that we're done with step 4, we're going to move on to the final step, which is cancel the spectator ions, which are ions that exist on both sides of the equation. So if we look at our equation, we have 2 NO3 minus on both sides. So we're going to cancel them out. And we also have 2K plus on both sides, so we'll cancel them out as well. And then we're going to rewrite the equation. So we're going to get Pb2 plus aqueous plus CrO4 2 minus aqueous, giving us PbCrO4 solid. That is our net ionic equation. Now before we call it done, let's just double check our work. Okay, so we need to make sure that both the number of atoms on both sides are the same. And the charges are also the same on both sides as well. So a real quick check, we have 1 Pb on both sides, 1 Cr, and 4 oxygen. So we're good there. For the charges, we have 2 plus and 2 minus. So that's going to add up to 0 on the left-hand side. 
And on the right hand side, we have PBCRO4. That's a compound, it's neutral, and there's no charge. So therefore, it's zero charge. So the total charges on both sides are the same as well. So that means good job to us. So there we have it. We managed to write the total and net ionic equation in five steps. To recap, when the question only gives us the reactants, we'll need to first predict the products after figuring out which type of reaction is involved. And then we need to make sure that we identify the physical states using solubility rules. And then we balance the entire equation. And then after that, we look at the AQ terms and we ionize them. And that will give us the total ionic equation. And then after that, we cancel out the spectator ions and rewrite the equation. And that will give us the net ionic equation. If you are looking to practice on writing net ionic equation for other types of reaction, watch out for part 3 and part 5 of this series. I hope the video was helpful. Do subscribe and thanks for watching.